Well, 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 we had a very interesting uh, hangout yesterday. Buddha and Lakshmi were there, and they had to do, they had to remove a cat from my vagina. <laughs> I'm going to explain to you exactly what happened. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and read my transcripts here. Um, okay, here we go. Buddha, I'm the, this, uh, this is rule 13. Buddha just brought me some green tea for a hangout. And then I said, hi, Buddha. And then rule 13 said, he said, hi. I asked him, Buddha, can you check my chakras, please? And then Joshua J. Joshua said, Buddha's belly is as sexy as Lakshmi's tits. And then rule 13 said, he is meditation scanning me now. And then one of the... Uh, the people in my hangout named Brad said, Lakshmi does have some great tits. I try and sneak a peek now and then. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't get this fascination with tits, but to each his own, okay? <laughs> Rule 13 said, Lakshmi is okay with showing boob. And Joshua J. Joshua said, and nipple. Lakshmi is the Hindu goddess, right? Yeah, we are friends with her. She's really cool. Rule, Rule 13 she say it is not sexual when she shows her tits. Just femininely, femininely powerful. She is the goddess of women and fertility. Um, and then somebody asked if Buddha drove there, and then Rule 13 said, Buddha cannot drive, he just teleport, <laughs> which is true. It's a lot more efficient than driving, by the way. You don't have to deal with traffic lights. <laughs> okay. Um, Rule 13 said, hmm, Buddha found minor blockage in my heart chakra. He say he need to fix it. And um, I am lifting my shirt now. And then Buddha placed his hands on her tiny breasts. He said, Buddha is placing his hands on my tiny breasts. <laughs> Joshua said, Rule 13's tits look great. Joshua is one of my gay supporters, but he happens to be fascinated with female tits, which I find very interesting, but you know, like I said, to each his own. Rule 13 said, Buddha, okay, never mind. <laughs> Joshua says, oh, they are so small and beautiful. Yeah, he's one of my gay supporters, but he happens to enjoy looking at women's tits, okay? <laughs> Rule 13 said, my heart chakra is glowing now. He is fixing me. And then Joshua says, oh, they look like they might kiss. Sure, that wasn't Buddha's intent. See, my my supporters are hilarious. Rule thirteen said his hands are warming my boobs, and then <clears throat> and then one of my other supporters said, "Oh my, this is getting intense." Rule thirteen says, and he just squeezed a little. My boobs are now extra firm. His hands are warming my boobs. You might say Buddha's doing this. <coughs> hey, you guys, he's a deity, okay? He's he was acting like a doctor, like a deity doctor, fixing her chakras. <coughs> I don't think there was any sexual intent, okay? Um, <coughs> oh, that, those Jesuits. He's fixing my heart chakra. <coughs> then I asked um, 13, what was he trying to fix? Joshua J. Joshua said, those nipples are so perky now. And then... Rule 13 said, Buddha just pulled his hands, I mean. So he just pulled out. Um, my heart chakra is all better, wow. Okay. So yeah, Buddha is an amazing healer, which is kind of interesting because in my walk video, I was asking if we had a new healer deity at Church of Gale because I apparently heard a, uh, a false communication brain to brain, and apparently we don't need one because, as you can see, Buddha's pretty good at healing. <clears throat> and then Rule 13 says, Gail Chan, would you like a chakra scan from Buddha? And so I said, Sure, go ahead. So then I said, What was wrong with your heart, chakra 13? And Buddha said she had a minor blockage. And then I said, What happens when you have a blockage of your heart chakra? Uh, Buddha said you can have some health problems or feel down. But she said, now I feel as good as new. Um, and then um, Buddha is doing a, med Rule 13 said, Buddha is doing a meditation scan on Gail Chan now. She asked me, what do I feel? Actually, I don't 
didn't feel that much, except I think I felt like I was slightly vibrating. Um, uh, let's see. B Rule 13 said, my boobs vibrate when he touches me. I said, oh, Gail Chan Buddha says that your root chakra is blocked. What happened? It is the main chakra. I go, how did that happen? Gail Chan Buddha said, oh, never mind. Um, yeah, Buddha, Joshua J. Joshua said that Buddha had to stimulate his prostrate the other week. He's my gay supporter. <laughs> So Rule 13 said, he say, this is very interesting. He just called Lakshmi, the goddess Lakshmi, she's the Hindu goddess, to help him diagnose this. <clears throat> he says, this is very interesting, okay? Um, and then Lakshmi came in and said, yes, the root chakra in Gale is very blocked. And I, so I thought, oh, how did that happen? And I said, that's what happened to Brent, you know, that was back in early 2022. He had a very blocked root chakra, <laughs> uh, which Buddha fixed. And then Lakshmi says, she has seen this before. Um, Lakshmi and Buddha say that Gail's blockage can be due to SJW disease. I'll explain that to you all in a minute. We'll just keep following the conversation. And this happens... When a person begins to use too many labels for their sexuality and identity. Fortunately, I didn't make any, a lot of YouTube videos about it. It was something that I was doing personally, but apparently that doesn't make any difference. If you start thinking that you are a label, you can become a victim of SJW disease. The uh, demon Baphomet is behind the SJW movement, by the way. So basically... If you are an SJW and you're adopting their labels and trying to spread them around, you're basically honoring a, a satanic Bible, basically. <laughs> yeah, because Baphomet is a Satan supporter. He's one of the fallen angels. Yeah. <laughs> um, Buddha says that this blockage, uh, the SJW disease, can cause sexual confusion and obsession with sexual identity. And um, Brad asked, do you think Lizzo is using brain control to make us apply labels? I've been thinking of myself as very demisexual in the past weeks. And then Rule 13 said, oh no, Brad, Lakshmi says that demisexual is a false label. This is dangerous. And then Brad, Brad said, dangerous? Buddha will check your chakras too, Brad. <laughs> and then Brad said, please. <laughs> and, and Rule 13 said, uh, okay, uh, Rule 13 is quoting from the gods. They're saying that from consuming too many internet materials about identity labels, you can get yourself in trouble with the SJW disease. And Brad admitted that he'd been reading a lot of those. It can also come from consuming too many internet material. Okay, anybody already got that. Um, Brad, Buddha asked, your root chakra is blocked too. He will need to access your prostrate. Do you consent? And he said, yes, I trust Buddha with my prostate. Prostrate, excuse me. <laughs> One of my other supporters might asked, is mine blocked? <laughs> So they said, okay, let's get Lakshmi up in here. Lakshmi says that the demisexual label is a way for SJWs to confuse normal romantic connection. According to the goddess Lakshmi, most women fit the definition of demisexual. You know, that makes sense. That does. Now, Buddha started to glow with his hands and he put a finger in Brad. And then Brad's saying, oh, he does have warm hands. And then Rule 13 is saying, this may tingle, Brad. Um, so I, um, I asked them, how's my root chakra doing right now? And Rule 13 said, they're still diagnosing for Gail. Um, they say that the root chakra blockage on, on me is deep. And then Lakshmi said, I said, well, Lakshmi, you're the one who told me that I had asexual leanings. Lakshmi says, Gail is not asexual. 
she is Gail, okay? Um, basically, Lakshmi did not want me, to, want me to define myself by a label, okay? <clears throat> and then Joshua J. Joshua said Lakshmi was glowing right now. I guess when she said that. And Lakshmi said Gail has asexual tendencies, but this is not a label. We must be careful of sex labels. So basically, what Lakshmi was saying is, yes, I have asexual tendencies, but that does not mean that I am asexual as a label. In other words, I have to be very careful not to confine my identity to a box or a label or a definition. You see what I'm saying? Um, and then when she said that to me, she was glowing. So um, sex labels, according to these gods, B Buddha and Lakshmi, block our chakras, okay? They confuse our true self-identity. In other words, we do not see ourselves accurately. It causes confusion about who we are. And um, so then Joshua said, oh, like INTP, like I was telling everybody I was an INFP, and all of that's going to have to stop. So sex labels, even, even mental illness labels, even psychological type labels, all block our chakras. Um, so um, Lakshmi said, sometimes Gail likes sex. Sometimes she doesn't care. It's normal, Lakshmi said. Um, so apparently using labels can cause a root chakra block. Now, root chakra is a very important chakra, so you do not want this to happen. <laughs> um, Buddha was stimulated, so Buddha started stimulating Brad's prostrate, and um, Buddha milked the semen from Brad's prostrate, started stimulating his prostrate, and uh, he cleared his root chakra. And then Buddha pulled out. He was inside Brad with his glow fingers. And then Brad said, well, I certainly do feel better now. And then um, Rule 13 said, Brad came a little like a milking. Hmm, I didn't know you could milk men. <laughs> Fresh root chakra from Buddha. So it, <laughs> Joshua said, oh, it was a prostrate orgasm. He says, I make bottoms do that all the time. This is my gay, gay friend, okay. Now, ah, okay, I don't know about a little. We're gonna have to, Brad said, I don't know about a little. We're gonna have to send the cleanup crew. <laughs> okay, um, Buddha said he's gonna have to fix the root chakra for Gail. And this should fix, this, fix excuse me, the sexual identity obsession. Um, Garbage man said, the Jesuits like to accuse you, Gail, of being a whore and having INFP obsession. I really could care less what they say. My opinion of them is so low, it's like, who cares? <laughs> Anyways, so, um, and, and then Rule 13 said, I always knew that Gail was more than just an INFP. <clears throat> okay, let's go. Gail John. Is it okay if Buddha inserts his glow fist into your anal area? Well, I trust Buddha. He saved Jesus' life, so he's my friend. He said, you will feel this for sure. Now, what's interesting is I didn't really feel it that much. <laughs> I wonder if it has something to do with my asexual leanings. I don't know. So, um, he's going in. He's in. Do your anal tissues tingle? I felt a little tingling. Um, Brent said he was jealous right now. He would like to get fisted by Buddha. Now, that I find very interesting, Brent. I didn't know you were like that. <laughs> he said, feels so good. Okay. It feels amazing, Joshua J. Joshua agreed. <laughs> Buddha says he'll look at Brent next. So I'm watching his hand go in and out. You see the glow, and then the glow disappears. He is finding major blockages. Okay. He's pulling something out. Oh, he was pulling all sorts of stuff out. He said, this one is the INFP blockage. That means I was getting obsessed with being an INFP. Okay. This will make it so that Gail is not obsessed with this label. Buddha's pulling out. He says he still has other root chakra. He has another root chakra issue to deal with. He would like to put his glow fist into her vagina. 
he's asking my husband Brent for permission. Um, Brent says that, that as a gynecologist he understands sometimes a man must put his hands in your woman's vagina for her health. Buddha is inserting his glow fist into Gail's vagina. Rule 13 is saying, if only regular gynecological gynecologist visits were this cool. <laughs> um, okay. And then Rule 13 asks, do you feel the fist in your G-spot, Gail? I said, what's the G-spot? They explained to me, that's something, I think, related to your clitoris. So is it vibrating? It is a sensitive area at the front of your vagina. If you press it, you kind of have to pee. I said, something is making us, and then Buddha, and then they said, something is making a sound in there. Gail Chan. Buddha asks, has your vagina been purring lately? He is grabbing something. Purring? Not so strange, Brad says. Like a cat. I wonder if Gail feels, I, actually, I, I didn't feel, I didn't hear anything. No. You got to understand, they were kind of doing this stuff like in another dimension. And I am not able to perceive the other dimension. Brent is with his, uh, well, we'll, we'll get to Brent later. Um, then, the, then Rule 13 asked me questions about gerbling. I thought, what? I don't do gerbils. Do you insert a gerbil in there? I said, no, man, I don't do stuff like that. <laughs> Doesn't interest me. And then um, he said, Rule 13 says, do you ever stimulate your clitoris with gerbils ever? I said, nope, never. Total bore. I, I could care less. <laughs> wow, but never. Okay, uh, let's uh Buddha says there's something furry inside, but fur should not be visit should not be inside the vagina unless it is a trans neo vagina. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. He said, wait a minute. He has to. Uh, I have to save the cat. Now, what's that? What's really funny about that is I've been reading a book called Save the Cat writes a novel to help me with my Gale series, okay? <clears throat> Rule 13 explained a neo-vagina is a wound a tranny has. Okay, whatever. Sounds like a bore to me. Let's keep on going. <laughs> okay, they cut the penis open and invert it to make a vagina hole. Okay, whatever. Ah, oh, yawn, I don't care. <laughs> but I'm going to read you. Some people might find this interesting. The cat core. But the pubic hair remains some time and hair grow inside. Oh, really? How? Hmm. <laughs> okay, you can watch tranny surgery video, video sometime to show you. I, I really don't care. I'm not interested. <laughs> anyway, Buddha is pulling something out. Yeah, that's what I thought. Save the cat. It is a cat. How did this happen? Oh, my God. One of my followers said, how can there be a cat in my vagina? <laughs> I asked this. Is there any catnip in there, Gail? A cat in your vagina, Rule 13 says. Buddha says it is more likely than you think. <laughs> How horrifying, Brad says. He has removed a cat. It is a kitten-sized energy blockage cat. And there is some catnip at Gale's cervix. I thought, oh, horrors. <laughs> Who put that there, I asked. Someone must have put energy catnip inside to attract an energy blockage cat. It is whoever caused the root chakra blockage. Oh my goodness, one of my followers said. Brent is concerned. Does this mean when he does it with Gail that he did it with the cat too? <laughs> it is a kitten. It was an orange colored kitten. Buddha says the cat has been saved. He is petting it and said, you don't need to be saved anymore. How did this happen, I asked. Now Buddha is turning to Brent. Um, <clears throat> uh, actually, my stomach did seem like it was, I don't know if it was because of the cat or gas or whatever, but it seemed like it was getting bigger. <laughs> Maybe you were subconsciously, oh, never mind. Gro Anyways, so Buddha placed the kitten in Brent's arms like a baby. Now he must heal Brent too. Brent had a blockage in his root and third eye chakra. Buddha put his glow hand on Brent's penis and inserted his tongue into Brent's mouth to access his third eye. It had to go deep. No homo, he said while he was doing this. And Rule 13 says, I admit, this looks kind of hot. Yeah, she would think that's hot. To me, it's like, I don't care. <laughs> Buddha is milking Brent's penis as the tongue is in his mouth. 
interesting medical procedures, how I'm seeing this. Um, Brent just ejaculated a lot. Brent has weirdly big loads. I think that's part of the medical procedure, 13. <laughs> Sun is on his stomach. It shot into his mouth accidentally and hit his eye. The kitchen is purring and licking it to clean him. Sun got in his mouth. It's because Brent has such a long penis. Buddha's okay with all this. Apparently, it's part of the medical procedure. We had to clear him out. His tongue is still in Brent's mouth. Buddha is pulling his tongue out. He has cleaned the third eye and root chakra in Brent. Now he says to Brent, now look, Brent, Brent was in shock. And rule 13 says, what do you see? Joshua says, his eyes are spinning. There are hoof prints all over a Save the Cat book and hoof prints on an INFJ writer book. Hoof prints all over Gail's apartment. This is bad, folks. <laughs> that means bad. <laughs> <coughs> that goat monstrosity named Baphomet has been in my apartment. <coughs> Whenever he puts hoof prints on anything, it means he's put a spell on it. So, like, that means I can no longer <coughs> read my INFJ writer book or my Save the Cat books without falling under his SJW spell. So I will not be touching them. He did that to my Bible in 2022, too, so I don't read the Bible anymore. Yeah. <coughs> Buddha told me to quit reading it. Yeah, he put hoof prints in my Bible. So that every time I would read it, I would get these crazy ideas about how the prophecies applied to me, and I, my mind would go off in these really weird obsessions. Um, Buddha said this was a plot to destroy the book series that Gail's been working on by ruining it with writing cliché. So I asked, are the stories I've written thus far okay? Buddha says, well, we will have to closely review the stories now to make sure. I said, what about my past stories? He, Buddha said, if Gail follows her instructional writing books, she will lose her gift of intuitive writing, this, which is so special to Jesus. He said Jesus' vision for the stories was a Gale biography, not fiction. Therefore, fiction writing is incompatible. In other words, I was a lot of the books I was re, um, studying talked about fiction writing techniques. And I made a copy of the INFJ Writer and Save the Cat Writes a Novel for my computer because I was afraid maybe I'd lose my Kindle and I asked if I should delete them. What I'm going to do, I'm going to treat those books just like I treat the Bible. Like, I couldn't get myself to throw out the Bible, even though it had hoof prints on it. So I'll just keep them, but I will not read them. At least not until I finish the Gale series. Yeah. Yeah. Buddha said, <coughs> Oh, she's making me cough with her mites. Buddha says the kitten pregnancy caused obsession with transcribing those books. Yeah, I typed them all out. Baphomet inserted the catnip and the kitten into Gail's vagina. And, I, and then I asked, how did he do that? And Rule 13 said, he's a demon. <clears throat> Maybe one of the gods said that. So I said, how do we stop him? Um, Buddha said, we must avoid activities that contaminate the root chakra. That means stay away from labels. Um, identity labels, especially sexual labels, give Baphomet power over people. It is a way to take away their true individuality and make them boring. <clears throat> so um, I said, well, what about what I've written thus far? He <coughs> <coughs> Goodness, those Jesuits. <coughs> Buddha said that Brent needed to review the books again with a fresh third eye chakra to see. He said, Gail has been off her path. The book should be an autobiography of what really happened. <coughs> Fortunately, it looks like Buddha caught this early. So they, I just wasted my time maybe transcribing whole books and stuff, you know. But anyways, Buddha caught it before it caught, did a lot of damage. Gail does not need to learn how to write her own life story. <coughs> Apparently, I've got a gift to write and I don't need to be reading writing instruction books. <coughs> uh, obsession with how to write will block her chakras 
and <coughs> and she could get energy blockage from energy blockage kittens in her vagina again. So I said, I'm scared to write right now because I need feedback on what I've done thus far to know exactly where I've exactly gone off the path. Off the path. And Brendan Zach would review. But he said, no more writer books. Don't, in other words, quit reading the writing instructional books. Just write from the heart. And then he, then they, he asked, what is Ethical Slut? That was a book about polyamory that I was reading recently. Buddha said, books about identity labels can block the root chakra. Um, and uh, so I said, okay. He said, labels are a good sign that Baphomet has done something. He tempts humans with labels which let him in. Mental illness labels are included, because I was saying I had dependent personality disorder. Um, Buddha's advice for, for the book series is to write short stories of autobiography that are true. <clears throat> he said, so I asked, does this mean all speculation should be out? I thought I needed to speculate to make some scenes more believable. He said, the story should present real events from the past like a photograph. They should present Gail as she felt and believed at the time that they happened. Intuitive guessing is good. The problem is trying to insert rules for writing fiction into a story that is non-fiction. So I said, yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> and then I asked Buddha why, um, he said, this is perhaps, I, you know, why was I, um, the reason I was reading the instructional books and trying to apply it to my writing, he said, this is perhaps because Gail does not feel her work would be accepted if she wrote from the heart. She needs to stop worrying about trying to please others and focus on the story in her own words. Her writing is too unique to be put in a box. <clears throat> and then I asked him to elaborate on writing from the heart. And that means to simply write what you feel you should write without second guessing if you wrote it correctly according to someone else's standards. For example, your writing does not need to adhere to save the cat rules. And then I thought, oh, I see. I thought I was writing from the heart, perhaps because I was addicted to labels that caused me to forget myself. Um, I actually just wrote a story which was pretty much like how Buddha advised. and In my opinion, that's the best one I've written yet. Yeah. I said, I'm afraid if I just go with my guts that the story will lack credibility and be confusing. And what's really funny, at that time, Zach was trying to hit on La the goddess Lakshmi, saying she was hot, and that he wanted to bed her. Zach's actually bedded Lakshmi's mother, Durga. I think her name is the goddess Durga. <laughs> and I said, La I said, Zach, I know Lakshmi. She's very monogamous. She is not interested in having it with you. And Lakshmi said, not even a little bit, referring to whether Lakshmi would want Zach to make her pregnant. Lakshmi said she's not like her mom, Zaku. That's what 13 said. You cannot do the same thing. And then Lakshmi said, but her mother still asks about Zaku. <laughs> Zaku had sex with the goddess. I think her name is Durga, uh, Lakshmi's mother. <clears throat> Lakshmi said, we shouldn't label our behaviors as if they define us. The more labels we attach to ourselves, the more we block who we really are. None of us is a sexuality or a mental illness. Basically, so I said, okay. Lakshmi said that there were times in Gail's life where her thoughts, beliefs, and feelings were very different. She was not the same person her whole life, and she should not be ashamed of her growth. There was a time when she embraced the marriage list, for example. She just decided later that it was no longer serving her. She said this was an important time of growth, of growth because she gave up her need to have backups of things she was afraid of losing. Gail still struggles with this, but she's trying to better herself all the time. That's what makes her a hero. <clears throat> and she said like Gail's hoarding of duplicate or bulk items was a symptom of this too. 
Gail has a fear of scarcity. Um, okay. Then I asked Lakshmi, why do I have a tendency to use labels? Lakshmi said it is from a lack of identity that some humans develop as children when they are too afraid to be who they really are or to be vulnerable. So they pretend to be things they are not in order to impress the world and feel adequate. And then I asked, how did Brent's root chakra get blocked? And um, Baphomet was apparently in my apartment and able to get Brent too. <clears throat> so I asked, Baphomet got in because of all the labels I was using? Yes. And when Brent humped your cat pussy, he got the energy cat dander in the head of his penis. Buddha said that. And he said it was like an STD, a sexually transmitted disease. And then that caused him to start ejaculating cat semen into my vagina, which could have filled me with kittens. Oh my goodness. Glad I didn't get it that bad. I was close. Hey, Buddha saved us. And then I asked, how did he get cat semen? And he said, it is from getting the cat dander inside his penis. It went to his balls and turned it into cat semen. And then I said, well, can't we just abort the kittens? And then Buddha said, you cannot abort energy kitten blockages. You must clean the chakras. And he said, the kitten blockage in me temporarily blocked uh, Brant's actually got Jesus's glowing white semen in one of his balls and the kitten blockage that I had uh, temporarily blocked uh, Brant's ability to use Jesus's semen when he's, had, when he's having sex with me. Um, so I asked, so Brent thought he was ejaculating Jesus semen and was tricked? And then uh, the gods answered he couldn't see properly because of his third eye chakra blockage. Does he still see me as future Gail, I asked, and Rule 13 said, yes. Um, I asked him if my current stories are okay, and Rule 13 said, most look okay. She thought the most recent one about canceling the marriage list seemed suspicious. I actually looked at that one. I think that's my best one, though I have given it to my men, because basically, what was really that story came about a kind of strange way. I was re I was reading a transcript of a conversation I had with Zach Knight in 2021, and got so addicted to it I decided to just throw out all the writing instruction books and just write what interested me. And I wrote it really fast. And in my opinion, it was the best story I've written yet. So I'm going to use a similar technique, and I basically threw out everything from all the writing instruction books that I learned to write it. I just wrote it how I wanted to write it. And I think it's the most interesting story that I've written so far. I mean, I was violating all sorts of writing rules. I said, I'm just going to, I said, this is such a fascinating conversation. I'm just going to write it in a manner like how I would want to, you know, that interests me. And it's like, yeah, I think that's my best story thus far. I, it's funny that I was able to do that even with the kitten blockage. <laughs> yeah. Um, apparently it didn't block everything. Um, so, um, <clears throat> but I, I was starting to get into the label mentality for my next story. So it's a good thing that a Buddha fixed that. Not only that, having a root chakra blockage affects your health down the road. So it's always good to get that fixed. I have noticed some more health issues coming up which I talked about in my last video. Um, okay, so we decided, today I went to the botanical gardens and decided to do stuff to rejuvenate my chakras after the major surgery I had yesterday. Um, and um, I asked, what did he pull out of my vagina and my anus or whatever? He said uh, he pulled out a mental illness labels, books, internet articles, an orange kitten, YouTube videos about mental illnesses and sexual identity. So I'm going to have to totally stop all interest in labels. Uh, books on writing methodologies. The, the book Ethical Slut came out. I was exploring polyamory because I put the polyamory label on myself. 
And then I remembered that once Jesus told me, what pair of shoes are you wearing today, Gail? And Jesus always told me to speak from my heart with my videos and everything and not worry about labels or categories. And then Rule 13 said, now my boobs are so plump. As soon as the heart chakra was fixed, my boobs became swollen. She said, I will soul search to determine the cause of my blockage. And I said, Buddha didn't tell you? Buddha said, I must self-love more. I will masturbate more. Buddha and Lakshmi left and said they had a good time. Okay, so I haven't had a time, chance to think about all this. And I found an interesting article about labels, written from a Buddhist perspective. So I'm going to read it to you. One of my favorite Buddhist concepts is the concept of emptiness. It's a central teaching in Buddhism, and yet it's often misunderstood. Emptiness does not mean nothingness. And before I continue reading, I would like to say that I know for a fact that Jesus hates the us-them mentality, okay? He hates that. Um, yeah, let's continue. In all these cases, these teachings were aimed at getting people to focus on the quality of the perceptions and intentions in their minds in the present. In other words, to get them into the emptiness mode, once there, they could use the teachings on emptiness for their intended purpose. To loosen all attachments to views, stories, and assumptions, leaving the mind empty of all the greed, anger, and delusion, and thus empty of suffering and stress. And when you come right down to it, that's the emptiness that really counts. Emptiness means all that things, all things, are void of intrinsic existence on their own. In other words, everything comes into being because of causes and conditions, sometimes referred to as dependent origination. Things only exist because of their interdependence on the things that make it exist. You can take a look at anything and look for its causes and conditions. For example, a table exists because of the materials and processes that make it a table, the causes and conditions. It wouldn't be a table without wood, nails, glue, the hands of a carpenter, hammer, staples, and on and on. Then break each of these down. The glue is a combination of ingredients. The person who invented glue, the people who made the person who invented the glue, the machine that forged the shape of the head of the hammer, etc. Then break each of these down and you'll see, you'll see that you end up with countless combinations of causes and conditions that allow your table to exist as a table. Another example of this is to imagine a cake. We think of a cake as this thing that exists because it's there. <clears throat> I've seen a cake. I've eaten a cake. I know that a cake is a real thing. And yet a cake does not exist as an intrinsic thing because it only exists as the culmination of all the things that make it a cake. Eggs, flour, sugar, heat, a baker, etc. You can analyze anything <clears throat> and come to the same conclusion. Things only come into being as a result of their causes and conditions. And the causes and conditions have their own causes and conditions. And this goes on and on and on. So what does this have to do with labels? Once you label me, you negate me. That's from Soren Kierkegaard. Consider the way we use labels in our society. I'm a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I'm a Christian. Or I'm a trans. Or I'm a gay. Or I'm a whatever. I'm a Buddhist. I'm smart. I'm dumb, etc. We use labels or I'm polyamorous, I'm monogamous, okay? We use labels as if they were permanent things that make us who we are. We, like everything else, exist because of causes and conditions. We are who we are because of the countless, <coughs> countless things that make us who we are, like the cake. We inherit genetics from our parents beliefs and ideas from our family and society, and these things are part of how we are, but not what we are. <clears throat> the problem with our labels <clears throat> is how we use them as nouns instead of adjectives. When I use a label like I'm a Buddhist as a noun, it separates me from everything that is not a Buddhist. 
It divides and separates. <clears throat> now consider the label, I'm a Buddhist, as an adjective. It becomes about how I am in life and not what I am. The reality is, no matter how hard I try, I can't be a Buddhist or a Christian or an anything because these aren't things to be. We already are something. We're human. When we learn to view our own labels and perhaps more importantly, the labels we assign to others as adjectives instead of nouns, it will be like talking to someone <clears throat> and realizing that I am wearing a blue shirt and you are wearing a red shirt. But the color of our shirts doesn't make us who we are. It's just part of how we are right now at this specific moment <clears throat> of being human. Try to start viewing labels, yours and others, as adjectives rather than nouns and see how that changes the way you view yourself and others.